Hello there and welcome back. This is going to be a video regarding tests of significance, but we will be using the t distribution. Now notice here that we have a sample size of 28, a mean for the sample as being 25 decimal 2. The sample's standard deviation is 4 decimal 6. Then we have some hypotheses. Now when we are dealing with t distributions, we usually use them when we do not know the population's mean and the standard deviation of the population. That is why we are going to be using these samples standard deviation as an approximate for the populations. Now we have a null hypothesis as the true mean of the population equaling 23.3, but we have an alternative hypothesis that the true mean is actually not equal to 23.3. Let's also say that we're going to be using a level of significance of about 0.5 or so 5%. So the level of significance is denoted by this symbol and we're going to be using 0.05. In order to answer this question, we're going to be first calculating our t value. To do this, we will be using the sample mean 25 decimal 2, subtract the supposed null hypothesis, assuming it to be true, it would be 23 decimal 3, divided by the sample standard deviation of 4 decimal 6, which is then divided by the square roots of our sample size. 28. This equals 2.186, which is going to be our t value. Now, we're in order to actually find the associated proportion to this, or the probability of getting this, we also need to know the degrees of freedom. That is n minus 1. This will give you your degrees of freedom, which means our sample size subtract 1, which is 27. Now we have all the data in order to find the probability we want. Heading over to this table here, the, the column on the left represents our degrees of freedom. We go to the 27 row, move all the way to the right until you hit something that's close to 2.186. Because it's not actually on the table, we just have to find two values that are close to it. Therefore, we would be getting some kind of range. Notice that 2.186 is between 2.158 and 2.473. Now the associated probabilities to, these, to both of these values are on top. It is given as being 0.01 and 0.02. Going back then, we have 0 0.01 and we have 0 0.02. Rearranging these from least to greatest, we would have 0 0.01 is less than our t value, we, the t value we, we want, the probability we want. So I should say the probability of the t value with a degree of freedom of 27 being greater than our t value itself. So it would be 2.186 which is also less than 2.02 because that would be the greatest in our little range we have here. Now because we are doing a two-tailed or two-sided sort of tests of significance, we have to multiply each of these probabilities by 2 because notice that the alternative hypothesis is just that the mu is not equal to some number. Whenever something is not equal to a certain number, it is either greater than it or it is less than it because that would be equivalent to doing some sort of absolute value. Therefore, since we can have something, the probability of it being greater or less, we have two probabilities, and thus we have to multiply both of these by two to account for both tails on the distribution. Therefore, multiplying this by two and this by two, we would get, we would get something of 0 0.02, which is less than all of this. I'll just say the probability of t being greater than 2.186, which is less than 0 0.04. And now this here would be our final answer almost. This is all we need to find out the, the finishing touch, the formality. Moving this a bit upward because I'm slightly going off screen here. Now take note that we're doing a level of significance of 5%, 0.05. This entire range here is less than 0.05. And because of that, because our probability of t is in between this range, rather logically thinking then that it would mean the the probability of t is going to be less than this as well. And because that is the case, we have this, this probability here is statistically significant. And as a result, we can say that the alternative hypothesis is probably true and that the null hypothesis is wrong. And as such, to end this in a more formal manner, we are able to say that the null hypothesis has changed, which means the mean of the population is not equal to 23.3 and it is some other value. And as such, this is the conclusion to this video. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comment section below. I will do my best to answer your questions. Do not forget to rate and subscribe if you find this content interesting and want to know more. And I hope you're having a nice day.